In this 3D animation, we've developed visualizations of pain pathways and brought them to life to help you understand why we feel pain. Pain is a complex process, but these visual representations will help you understand the differences between the three main pain types and why we feel them. Pain happens in the periphery. Here we see Phil with normal pain processing, meaning if he is injured, sensory neurons called nociceptors will be activated and cause a warning system to light up in the body. Now we see Phil getting hurt and his pain fibers are activated. The trauma to the skin in his elbow region is sending a signal through his spinal cord and into his brain. The brain is then going to react depending on cognitions and emotions, increases and decreases in pain response. A lot of our medications and interventions are focused on affecting neurochemical and behavioral changes at brain level. Due to all the complex mechanisms of action, Focusing on just one typically won't solve the problem and wipe out pain signals, which is why a multimodal approach to pain management is so important. First, let's look at nociceptive pain. Nociceptive pain is the most basic type of pain, one that we'd associate with a common injury and arises from actual or threatened damage to tissue. Examples of nociceptive pain include rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, tendonitis, neck and back pain with structural pathology, and sickle cell disease. In the animation, we can see an example of metacarpal joint inflammation. As the fingers bend, nociceptors are activated and signal damage to tissue. These joints are going to release neurochemicals and ultimately a signal, which is then going to pass through the spinal cord into the brain. If this input is sustained and doesn't go away, it can cause the nervous system to be sensitized. With prolonged joint inflammation, we sometimes see changes at the spinal cord and the brain, leading to a more complex pain response. Next, we have neuropathic pain. This type of pain is predominantly caused by damage to the nervous system and is categorized by conditions such as spinal cord injury, multiple sclerosis, and stroke. Other examples of neuropathic pain include postherpetic neuralgia, lumbar or cervical radiculopathy, and painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy. The sensation of neuropathic pain itself may be associated with pain from normally non-painful stimuli that sometimes manifest as a stabbing of shocking sensation. In the spine, the disc is herniated and releases neurochemicals. These chemicals travel to the brain and signal pain. Subsequently, information descends from the root nerve also to cause painful or non-painful sensation. The last group we're going to talk about is nosoplastic pain. This type of pain was only recently defined within the last year and describes the activation of nociceptors without any actual tissue damage. Basically, the nociceptors are activated and we're not sure why. Conditions causing this type of pain include fibromyalgia, tension type pain, restless leg syndrome, and irritable bowel syndrome like we see here. In nociceptive pain, there is no clear evidence of actual or threatened tissue damage or any evidence for disease or lesion of the somatosensory system causing the pain. In this case, not only does the sensitization occur within the gut, but also in the nervous system. Finally, let's take a look into how the opioids we use to treat these types of pain interact with the brain over time. Opioid medications are powerful analgesics for treating pain that can be effective when prescribed judiciously in selected and monitored patients. However, opioids also interact closely with the brain's pleasure systems and release dopamine into this blue area, the nucleus accumbens, contributing to rewarding effects for the user. Repeated administration of opioids leads to dependence where abrupt discontinuation can lead to withdrawal symptoms and tolerance, requiring an increased dose to meet the same previous effects. All drugs of abuse have one thing in common. They stimulate their own continued use despite adverse consequences.